We're pleased to have you with us tonight. We're going to take our masks off. We're all in a position where we're not really with anyone. But we wanted to show the, our solidarity with uh, the masks on campus and uh, being able to uh, be safe around each other. Um, today, we're having a presentation for the Engineering Open House. Um, we have a presentation for the Chemical Engineering Department. And we also have three students with us. Lexi, Matt, and Emily have been kind enough to take a little bit out of their evening and join us. And they'll be around after the presentation to answer your questions. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, share my screen and jump into the Chemical Engineering Department presentation. I'm Dr. Gary Whiting. I'm a professor of practice in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Virginia Tech. Um, very pleased to have you here with us virtually online today to talk about our department, about our academics, and also about career opportunities for chemical engineers. Uh, I did my PhD work at Virginia Tech. Uh, it was a great experience. And now I'm back. I went out for 31 years, worked in industry, came back about five years ago, rejoined the department as a professor of practice and the undergraduate advisor in the department. Do you have some of these skills? Are you creative? Do you like math, chemistry, physics? Are you good at problem solving? Are you good at working at teams? Are you a good individual contributor? Are you someone who enjoys responsibility? And someone who definitely doesn't give up easy? Well, if you have some of these skills or want to develop some of these skills, perhaps chemical engineering is for you. What is chemical engineering? Well, the traditional definition of chemical engineering is a branch of engineering concerned with design, construction, operation of machines and plants that perform chemical reactions to produce energy and useful products. But today, chemical engineers do much more than that. Our faculty's um, research topics relate to that, uh, give a little bit of insight into that broad brush of what chemical engineering is. So some of our faculty are dealing with microfluidic de devices for cell analysis. Others are dealing with high performance polymers and composite processing, things like making copolymer filaments or direct manufacturing through 3D printing or engineering liver tissue mimics and um, computational catalysis. The computation uh, machine learning developing from first principles into chemical reactions and then going in a lab and doing those types of reactions to prove the concepts, uh, that's become a very big field and we have professors operating there. So our professors do novel membrane separations. Others are working in the area of nanoparticles, controlled drug delivery, constructive biomaterials for tissue engineering to name just a few things going on in our department. Some industries where chemical engineers have careers are shown here. And um, let's see. So chemical production, materials production, things like polymers, fibers, ceramics, uh, consumer product manufacturer, food and beverage industries, energy, environmental sustainability, medicine, national security, safety, agriculture, uh, automotive battery development, things like uh, organizational structure leadership in chemical companies and various companies, biological engineering, biomedical engineering, and electronics. So these things over on the right are all opportunities that you can achieve through chemical engineering. And I'm going to back up and just I'm gonna stop for a second and tell you about some of our graduates and what they're working on. And we'll get into some more of that. Um, recently, one of our graduates that had worked at uh, ExxonMobil for a number of years, four years. He recently went to work for SpaceX in Florida. 
who's now working on the, the manned capsule development for them as a chemical engineer. We have another graduate who graduated two years ago who went to, to a startup for furniture delivery. So you have just such a wide breadth of interests and capabilities for chemical engineers. Others, we have a student now that's about to graduate that went out to the Gigafactory where Tesla makes their batteries and was interviewed by Panasonic. So there's just a, a breadth of information. Um, Emily here is uh, in studying nuclear engineering, has a nuclear engineering minor, and she can tell you some about that. Chemical engineers will study nuclear engineering and go into that. That gives you a little bit of idea of what chemical engineers do, what areas they work in, but there's job roles also for chemical engineers. These are some of the job roles that you could expect when you graduate in chemical engineering. You could be involved in new product design, something building something new from concept to commercialization for customers. I teach a course on that, a senior course on that. New process design, that's uh, the traditional senior capstone work that we have. We have two semesters of that here. Yield improvement, making products, higher quantities of the product, less recycle of the product, uh, first pass, first quality yield. We wanna make the right thing one time and make it perfectly. Cost reduction, reducing the cost of the product while maintaining the same type of performance and delivery quality. Process improvements, um, quality improvements, troubleshooting what went wrong with the process. And we'll talk about an example of that here in a minute. Environmental stewardship. Many of our students will work in the DC area. Uh, there's some environmental firms there that they go and work for and safety, managing chemical processes and ensure they're designed and operated safely. Chemical engineers can be in the following organizations. So in my industrial experience, our organization was split up into different segments. And I was in the research and development portion of that for about half of my career, where we improved existing processes and innovated new products. Manufacturing would be actually a chemical engineer working out in a plant or a production facility to make products from raw materials. What we would call technical service or marketing services would be helping downstream customers. When we generate a product in our facilities, we would then pass that on to um, a paint making plant or a plastics production facility or a laminate paper facility. We would have technical service professionals that would help those customers integrate our product into their product. Quality control, management. A lot of chemical engineers end up in the management track and end up in um, higher level management organizations. Supply chain, so bringing in raw materials. Once your products are produced, warehousing them and shipping them globally, managing all that can be quite an interesting challenge. And finally, marketing organizations. Second part of my career, I was in marketing organization, as new venture management, and as a product manager, global product manager for a large chemical company. So we're, now we're going to go into two scenarios that you might see as a chemical engineer. It doesn't, these don't cover the whole breadth of chemical engineering. As we said, it's quite broad, but they'll give you a little bit of taste about what chemical engineering might be about. So scenario one, the plant is down. And this is an example of troubleshooting and problem solving in the chemical industry. So you are running a process. So when I was actually at this plant as a young engineer and I had responsibility for one area of the plant and um, the plant would uh, run into issues at time and we would say the plant would go down, okay? It would stop running and then we'd have to troubleshoot and decide how to resolve the issues. So you come in, um, 
in the morning and you find out that your plant has been down all night. Um, you're going to the morning meeting, the plant manager's there, uh, the area manager is there, maybe some knowledgeable other people are there and they're all debating what the problem is. They come up with three potential solutions to the problem and they're looking to you as a technically trained professional in chemical engineering to help them decide what the proper solution is to sort through these three alternatives and tell them what the proper recommendation is. So what is your recommendation in that case? Well, this requires skills and the skills that you'll develop as you work through this are technical expertise, the courses you take at Virginia Tech will lead to technical expertise. Problem solving skills you'll hone here, both through some of your coursework that's more experiential based, maybe some undergraduate research in a lab, um, maybe some co-ops or internships, team building. Some of our courses involve teams, persuasion. When you have a point of view, how do you get that across to your management? decision-making and social responsibility. So they're gonna to look to you to make a recommendation to solve the problem and get the plant running again. Scenario two, we call this sweet surprise and it's an example of new product development in the food industry. Some of our chemical engineers will do internships and co-ops with companies such as this. So this is a realistic scenario. So you're working with a team of folks that are developing a new candy bar. And they developed what they call the hokey bar. And uh, they put together a plan to launch this. <laughs> and in the first quarter, they're gonna deliver 250,000 product. But they've done some test marketing of this product. And it turns out that the regional test marketing of the hokey bar has just uh, been fantastic. It's gone through the roof. So your team is asked to present, you're gonna be asked to present in a meeting to upper level management tomorrow morning uh, about how to scale up the Hokey Bar from 250,000 units that your team thought you were gonna to have to produce in the first quarter to over a million units. You're given one day to do this. So you have all the background for a smaller size plant, smaller size production, but you're given a very short time frame to deliver a scaled up version of that in front of high level management. So how do you do that? The corporate management presentation in 24 hours. Are you up for that challenge? The types of skills required are pretty much very similar skills as the last time, technical expertise, interpersonal skills, team building, persuasion, decision making, but also time management comes into play. In chemical engineering, you're gonna to have to manage your time accurately. You're gonna to have to focus on what needs to be done, communicate effectively with your team members and um, train cross-functionally so that you know more than just chemical engineering itself. You may be taking a minor in another area. You're gonna be broadening your skill set, doing pathways courses, learning about other areas beyond just pure chemical engineering. The chemical engineers take a product from the lab to large scale production. That's historically what we do, but we do much more than that, of course. We use our minds, we use training, and we use people skills as we do this, chemistry, physics, math, and that can be pretty sweet. But these are just two scenarios that you might run into. Uh, and these could be duplicated. I'm sure these students here that are gonna share with you a little bit later can tell you about their experiences, um, some co-op experiences, some team experiences they've been on, uh, maybe some undergraduate research experiences that will help you better understand what chemical engineers do and how they're trained at Virginia Tech. Chemical engineers work on the body, in the body. And this is Padma Raja Gopalan. She's a chemical engineering professor. She does tissue engineering. This is a word cloud of her research. 
So liver cells, biology, membranes, um, you know, very active researcher, takes on undergraduate students for research. Um, just backing up here, about 10% of our students will do biomedical minors. So you can get a chemical engineering degree and a biomedical minor, and that gives you the breadth of being a chemical engineer and the focus of some biomedical training, two semesters of undergraduate research, uh, some introductory courses in uh, biomedical engineering. Chemical engineers are also managers. This is Dr. Julia Ross. She's the Dean of the College of Engineering. Uh, she graduated from Purdue. Um, she is a chemical engineer by training. She, does, she has done co-op work for uh, Eastman Kodak. Uh, she comes in every year and talks with our sophomore seminar students and tells them about her experiences as a co-op student and how that led her to graduate school and on to a career in chemical engineering, saying that she never thought, she never envisioned herself in this role, but chemical engineers are well-trained, um, we know how to manage, and uh, oftentimes will rise to high levels in organizations. We like to think big as chemical engineers, but we can also think small too. This is Dr. Michael Bortner. He's an assistant professor in chemical engineering. His focus is on polymer science and engineering, dealing with uh, manufacture of polymer materials for things like additive manufacturing. This is Lori Wagner. Lori uh, went on to work for Honeywell and she's worked there for quite some time on body armor development, technology, and innovation. So she's an innovation professional. She comes in and talks to our students in sophomore seminar. So people protection. Uh, Kenia Robinson, uh, alum, Virginia Tech, chemical engineering. She started out at this plant down in um, North Carolina in Charlotte area as a quality manager. Now she's transferred up to Portland, Oregon, and she's just been promoted to be the operations manager for PepsiCo. The PepsiCo Frito-Lay has a lot of consumer brands. She really enjoys uh, working with people. And that's what she does. Um, so food development, food and beverage development is another area that you can pursue as a chemical engineer. Quinn Costin, Graduated in 2010 with a BS in chemical engineering from Virginia Tech. He's now the North American high density polyethylene product manager. So making polymers for ExxonMobil. Uh, he comes in every year also. And we have many supportive alumni in our department. Another alum, Chris McDowell. You can see a little bit of what he presented in sophomore seminar over here. He started out as process engineer, research engineer, team leader. He works for Novazines, so enzyme development, <clears throat> building better biologicals for better lives in a growing world. So he develops a greener world. He's the site leader for Novazines in Salem, Virginia, which is not farther from the plant. And he also helps out in the department doing some adjunct teaching. A uh, recent alum, Ali Kalatsko, uh, I just caught up with her in the past couple of days. She was at Rice University. So some of our alum <clears throat> go on to graduate school. Her goal in life is to be a medical doctor. So she was at Rice University dealing with um, trying to develop different medical devices. She had a biomedical engineering minor and she also worked at a, um, a double major. She's a double major at Virginia Tech in chemical engineering and neuroscience. And she just reported to me that she's coming back to the Virginia Tech Carilion Medical School in July to continue, on her ed to continue her education. But while she was at Rice, she was developing these two products, Arterio Clear, which is a 
stent attachment device. You can see it down here. And then Lucia, a model for um, cervical cancer screening, diagnostics, and treatment. She's also working at the Texas Heart Clinic while she's doing this. So just a very energetic alum that's coming back to our area. And uh, as students become interested in medical opportunities, uh, she's certainly willing to talk with your chemical engineers. Uh, we're desired and we're compensated pretty well. So chemical engineers uh, in around $72,000 starting salary with a $5,000 bonus, uh, and that grows over time. So you can uh, create a, do a very, have a very productive lifestyle with that. And the job growth in chemical engineering is a little over 7%. Uh, these data are only published every few years by uh, the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. Chemical engineers are everywhere. So you say, how many people work in these areas? Well, about 22% back when this, these data were taken uh, were in chemicals, 14% in fuels, um, and some in engineering services, design, construction, building plants, biotech and pharma growing greatly. We have with the COVID pandemic and companies developing injectables, we have more companies coming to us looking for chemical engineers, food and consumer products, materials, electronics, pulp and paper uh, is a strong supporter of our students in um, or internships and co-ops. Some of the companies that recruit chemical engineers are shown here. Advancix, EAE Systems, Eastman Chemical, we talked about some of these companies, Georgia Pacific, Honeywell, Longevity, International Paper, Marathon, Micron. So right now, chip manufacturer is very uh, in demand and some others mentioned here. How do we prepare our graduates? Well, we start you out with solid fundamentals. Two to three years. So your first year is gonna be in general engineering here. You'll take two semesters of chemistry and then you're going to move into chemical engineering. In your second year, you're gonna learn mass and energy balances and thermodynamics. And you're gonna be taking things like organic chemistry, second semester physics, a lot of math and uh, physical chemistry. By your third year, you're heavily into your core chemical engineering courses and you're going to uh, learn the core of what you need to know. By the end of the third year, you're gonna be in unit operations laboratory. We have some larger scale facilities here in Blacksburg and I'll talk about our study abroad program that pairs with that for the summer of year three. And finally, in your senior year, you're gonna be in senior design with Aspen Plus modeling. And along the way, there's opportunities for cooperative education, undergraduate research, and things like the Chemi Car Team, which some of our students, Lexi, can tell you more about that. So our unit operations lab also has opportunities in Denmark. We send about 30 students, maybe a third of our class to Denmark every year. Uh, this is some a slide from Abby Guillemar, who graduated in the class of 2019, back from her trip to uh, the Danish Technical University, where she performed her unit operation lab studies. As part of that, it's five weeks study abroad, four weeks in the lab, um, cultural experiences, we have a design project, a scale-up project. It's great if we send one of our professors over and a TA teaching assistant and um, students collaborate with students from other universities. University of Alabama and Clemson also participate in this or did when the slide was present. Uh, the cultural experiences are things like visiting local brewery, uh, some local cultural experiences, seeing the municipal incinerator, and touring Cold War uh, 
facility. So just getting the Danish um, experience. You want more experience than that? Well, you could do cooperative education. So with this, you're usually going to add a year to your study, but it's all good because you're going to be earning money. You go out, out generally on three co-op terms, and by the time you graduate, you're going to have a year's worth of experience. Some of the companies that offer co-ops with Virginia Tech chemical engineers are shown here. Anheuser-Busch, Clorox. Now you say Clorox. What about Clorox? Isn't that just bleach? Well, not really. They have Hidden Valley Ranch products. They have Burke's Bees. They have charcoal briquette making. So quite a broad experience. And uh, recently, some of our chemical engineers have gone on to work there. Marissa Lee Stoke was a student that worked with us. DuPont out of Richmond in the Spruance plant, they typically hire students to two rotations, two or three rotations through their plant too. Uh, manufacturing consumer products, things like Nomex for firefighters, Kevlar, bulletproof vest, Corian countertops, and home wrap. We're getting near the end of our presentation. Another thing that you can participate in is undergraduate research. And typically this will allow you to spend three to nine hours in the lab with a graduate student pursuing an independent project, develop problem solving techniques outside the classroom. And there's a quite a wide variety of those that you can pursue. And we mentioned some of those at the outset of this presentation, so I won't go into them. Let's see, Jim Owens is now at MIT in graduate school, but when he was here, he uh, did undergraduate research, and these are some of the, his travels doing that. He went to regional conferences in, in Texas, um, in Boston, et cetera, so you can travel and network with summer research experience and some presentations, some conferences for undergraduate students. Another set of students, uh, Tucker King here, and some of our other students, they participated in a venture startup, and this was a, a biomedical startup for wound care solutions. So if you're interested in new product development, maybe venture launch, that's also an opportunity at Virginia Tech. ME Car Team. Um, so the Kemi car team, I'll let Lexi tell you about that after we're done. I'm not gonna go into that because I feel like I've been talking for half an hour and I need to move on. <laughs> but Lexi, uh, keep that in mind and we'll circle back to that and let you all talk about that. Um, so here's the Kemi car team. Uh, Matt, are you participating in that this year? Yeah, I am. Yeah. So it's hard to tell, you know, everyone's got a mask on. <laughs> so Lexi and Matt participate in that and they can tell you all about their success. We're very proud of the team. They, they first placed first in the international competition the past two years. And I'll let them tell you how many teams were involved in that, uh, particularly in 2019 in person. Finally, our senior design. When, by the time you're a grad, uh, graduate chemical engineer here, thoroughly trained. Um, professor Y.A. Liu is our senior de design capstone professor. He uses industry software called Aspen Plus Modeling, teaches you economic analysis, communication skills, and safety. Um, you're going to work with outside companies during this. He has collaborations with real industrial applications and allows you to gain some valuable experience your senior year. So that's what we had on in the area of the presentation. And I'll open it up to Q&A now. I'll exit out of this and uh, stop sharing. If you want to contact me, you can always find me on the chemical engineering website at Virginia Tech. My email is gwhiting at vt.edu. I'm glad to answer any emails you might send me later. So all students start off in uh, general engineering for their first year, and you'll typically acquire your specialty 
um, in the spring of your freshman year, you'll request um, a couple of different majors and um, you get your top option automatically if you have above a 3.0. If not, there's a little bit more um, extensive process. Yeah, just let me elaborate on that. So um, we're not, we're currently not filled the capacity in chemical engineering. Uh, we have a certain professor, student to professor ratio we like to maintain. Um, so even if you get below a 3.0, there is room there. Maybe you come in and you've taken uh, both chemistry courses in advanced placement in high school and you go into organic chemistry and maybe you have a little bit more difficulty than you think. Uh, there's still going to be room for you to move into chemical engineering. Okay, Emily, this next one's for you. You see that? Yeah, I got that one. Um, so right now, nuclear engineering is actually not a major. Um, it is offered as a minor. And there's, I can't remember how many credits it is. How, how many credits is it usually for a minor? Uh, usually 18 credits for 18. a full minor. And I think that one is. That one might be a little bit sm smaller. Shorter, fewer think, credits. Yeah, um, I think differential equations is counted. Yeah, cool. and there's a lot, there's some overlap for the like the math courses that you have to take as a chemical engineer and then for the, that minor. Um, so what I have had happen is I knew I did green engineering as a minor as well. And so that allowed me to kind of get a feel for different kinds of um, fields that I could go into. And I really thought nuclear was exciting and interesting. And so I had an internship with um, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission up in Maryland. Um, and that really opened me up to actually connect with some of the nuclear engineering professors at Virginia Tech. I was part of, um, or I was listening in on a, a conference call and was able to, oh, recognize, oh, he works at Virginia Tech and connect with him and then start doing undergraduate research. And that really got me connected to the nuclear engineering department. Um, which is rather small at tech, but it's because- What, what are you doing now? So I'm doing molten salt reactors. Yeah, what um, are you going to do now? So I'm gonna do my PhD in nuclear engineering. So I'll be starting that in the fall um, here at Virginia Tech as well. And so I'm continuing kind of the research that I've been doing and also what I got to do in my internships over the summer um, with the molten salt reactors that running tests in labs and seeing it's a lot of chemistry and a lot of chemical engineering because it's all salts which are chemicals and different things in running um, scaling up these smaller processes so it's actually been a great I've used all of the knowledge I've learned in my four years here at tech so far in chemical engineering great answer all right um this next one, let's see. Lexi, you, do you uh, know anything about this? Not really? okay. I mean, I, I, there's a number of ones uh, that I just know my classmates yeah, yeah. are doing. Yeah. Um, the obvious one is the chemistry, double majoring with chemistry. Um, that one's pretty easy. I don't know off the top of my head how many additional credits it is. Um, I think it's like seven or okay. something. Well, if you get a Bachelor of Arts, so there's... A, yes, yeah, there's a there's, Bachelor of Arts and a Bachelor of Science. There's actually four different double majors you can do with chemistry. One's medicinal chemistry, another is polymer chemistry, a third is a BS in chemistry, and then a BA in chemistry. So those are the four that I know. And then I think there's some, I've heard of some other people doing a double major with math. Um, yeah, I, I don't know credit wise how that breaks down. <laughs> yeah, mo most often it's a math minor with only takes a couple of courses, which is very easy to add to what you're doing. But if you're all about math, whatever you're all about, we can look into. Uh, some of them are a little bit prohibitive, like uh, you know, if you want to get a business minor and things, but we work with you to help you um, pursue your interests and a lot of things do flange up with chemical 
the chemical engineers work with programming often. Who wants to yeah, you want Yeah, to I can take this one. Um, so I guess just in general, if you're if you're doing pure chemical engineering, um, we're probably one of the less programming intensive majors. We only have one class junior year that's centered around programming and MATLAB and um, the different practical applications of coding within chemical engineering. And then um, from my co-op experience, I definitely didn't have any coding that was required. It was something where if you had extra skills, um, it was a plus for sure, but definitely not necessary. Um, some people will try to go the extra mile with programming and will even do like a, a CS minor or a CS double major. That's probably more if you want to get into like the data analytics and those kind of practical applications of chemi. Um, so that can be really helpful if you're if you're good at it and programming is something you're passionate about it. Um, but it's not something that's required for for the major, more so than like maybe like one class and like a couple other smaller things. Good, thanks. All right, this is I guess for Matt and Alexi. Yeah, so I can kind of touch on this. Um, so the Chemi Car team is a competition side of the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. Um, and basically the competition involves building and designing a car. Um, it's around a shoebox size car that will go a specific distance and is controlled um, by chemical reactions and whatever electronics used to read those chemical reactions um, and the changes that occur. Um, so it's a really fun uh, sort of design team that we have um, in the chemical engineering department. I work on the battery sub team. Um, so we are focused on how are we going to get enough power to all the motors and the electronics on board. So we use a lot of electrochemistry um, in design and building and making sure that the batteries we make are going to be safe um, and well contained with on the car. Um, the chemistry side works a lot with color changing reactions to have a noticeable change. This semester, they're also working with pressure reactions so that they can read a specific pressure and that kind of tells the car, okay, this is how far we want to go. Um, the control side works a lot with all the electronics and the coding and figuring out how are we going to get the car um, that define change from the chemical reactions and take that power from the battery and actually get those motors to move and tell the car what to do. Um, but it's a really fun um, design team. I really enjoy working on it. We have a lot of fun in the lab um, and it, it's, it feels really good to win too. So <laughs> you work towards that goal of you, um, putting everything together and once it works, it's a really rewarding experience. Matt, is there anything you want to touch on about it too? No, I think you covered it. Chemi is awesome, go team. <laughs> so about how many, uh teams were, were there, so I recall I was at doing, I was the advisor while Dr. Martin was on sabbatical in 2019, and I went to the regional competition, but there's quite a few teams in the competition, right? Um, last year, a little different, but prior to that, you know, quite, quite a few teams. I don't know how many in the national somewhere between 25 and 40 teams is my recollection from uh, global participants too. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was around 40 at nationals in Orlando and yeah, teams from all over the world, like Asia, Poland, South America. Yeah, so you can uh, collaborate and, and they encourage you to interact with the other teams, get to know what the other teams are doing share information so that's a, a tremendous opportunity all right uh here's a question from dorothy how would you describe the difference between a chemistry major and a chemical engineering major someone want to take that up or i, I can try to answer that um so one of i was considering the chemistry major coming into college actually and I initially started off as biochemistry, not engineering. So what I found when I was starting off was just course-wise, there's a lack of math in chemistry. You get to about multivariable calculus and then you're done. Um, but beyond that, like chemical engineers do take a lot of chemistry courses. And so the chemistry courses 
that's very similar. Again, the courses that we take for chemistry are a little bit more math heavy and you have, you need your differential equations, you need your operational methods, math, math courses, and you use those. And that's what appealed to me. Um, but speaking as like working outside and after graduation, chemistry majors tend to work small scale, tend to do in the lab, designing um, very small scale processes. Um, if you think of your chemistry labs, like that's what a chemistry major would do more so versus a chemical engineer, you take that smaller um, process and you scale it up. You make it so it you can mass produce these medicines. You make it so you can mass produce these different chemicals that you need um, to create kind of everything Dr. Whiting was saying before. There's food, there's medicine, there's plastic, there's so like the opportunities are endless. And although you might be able to do some of that with chemistry, chemical engineering allows you to be part of kind of a bigger picture, I'd say. Excellent. Thank you. Well, uh, I guess LLC, Jennifer, you're asking about living accommodations, living learning community, the dorms, close to your classes. Uh, did any of you all live in a living learning community? Yeah, so I can talk about um, Hypatia, which is the engineering LLC over in Hokal. Um, and it was a really good experience for me. Um, it's so in Hokal, there's Galileo and Hypatia, and we just kind of merge them together for Galapatia, but it's all engineering. Um, and I've had a really good time with it. You take an extra class to kind of get you set up for your college career outside of all the other um, traditional first year engineering courses. So that kind of gets you help set up with a LinkedIn, um, how to format a resume, um, cover letters and that kind of stuff, which was really helpful for me when I went to career fairs. I, I felt like I knew a little bit more of what was going on um, at my first career fair. Um, also, it's really nice to live with a whole bunch of other engineers in your dorm because you're often in the same classes. And if you need help, you can just knock on your neighbor's door and be like, hi, can you help me with this problem, please? Um, and I made a lot of my friends freshman year living in that dorm um, in Hoke Hall. Um, I, in fact, I live with all the people that I live with. We met each other freshman year in that dorm. So you make some really close connections. It's really great for networking, um, just meeting people in your major and also in all the other engineering majors as well. Yeah, my daughter was a mechanical engineer and she was in Gal uh, Hypatia also. And just as Lexi said, lifelong, she still keeps in touch with all her roommates, all the people that she knew from there. It was a tremendous uh, asset for Virginia Tech and for her to participate in that. Uh, what are some of the math courses? I could talk about this too. Um, so you start off your freshman year taking um, calculus. Um, one and two, um, and then you move on to do multivariable calculus, and then you have linear algebra and differential equations, and then finally you get to do um, operational methods, and then you're at the end of the math side. Um, but even though you finish the math courses, like in the math department, you still use a lot of that those same concepts in your chemical engineering classes. Um, and you apply them to fluid flow and pipes, heat transfer, all sorts of things. Um, so they're really useful. I personally don't love math very much, but when it's applied to things like it is in chemical engineering, it makes it a lot more e easier to understand um, the math aspect, so. Good question, Brianna. Any other questions? Now's your opportunity to ask questions. Oh, and I just want to give a little plug later in the week, I think it's Friday, um, Dr. Martin and Dr. Goldstein are going to have a video tour of our unit operations laboratory. So I think it was mentioned, we mentioned it in the presentation, there were a couple comments here about, well, Chemicar works over there, runs their operation out of that. But it's a, a scale-up facility, pretty much. So 
as Emily mentioned, and this work on small scales, but then we go to intermediate scale equipment and we have all that in the unit operations laboratory in Hancock Hall. So there's a course between your junior and senior year that allows you to work in that laboratory as a team of generally four people on six to eight experiments, depending on what they are, things like distillation, absorption, um, gas separations, heat transfer, solid liquid separations. What else am I missing? Hmm. There's like multiple kinds of reactions. We did packed bed columns. Um, I'm trying to remember because everyone does experiments. So it would be uh, continuous stirred tank re reactor reactors versus flood flow reactors, uh, process control experiments. So everything that you learn, there's an opportunity to demonstrate that on an intermediate scale over there. Well, if you have any questions that come up after this, um, be sure to email me at gwhiting at vt.edu. I'd be glad to answer your questions offline. Um, we're very pleased that you came out tonight and spent some time with us and learned about Virginia Tech Chemical Engineering and all the opportunities we have. Hopefully we're gonna see a, a number of you at Virginia Tech uh, taking your courses and maybe you'll consider chemical engineering as your curriculum. So have a great week and good luck on your studies. Take care. Thanks everyone. Thanks panelists. You did a great job. Thanks everyone.